Hey guys, it's Graham. What's well, cracking? This is my review of Through the Storm, Transdimensional Hunter Book 2 by John Ringo and Lydia Scherer. Uh The last video I recorded in the fortress, but uh, this one will just be a car video. Uh, still very, very much enjoyed this book. It is a very good sign when, if I'm listening to anything else, I kind of get this itch, this thought like, wow, I, I would really like to finish this other book and see what's happening, see where it's going. It's it's becoming more and more rare that I fall into a book that really pulls me into it. And this one does, even though I've got some quibbles about it. So brief recap, blah, brief recap of the first book. Main character is a girl named Lynn Raven. She's 17. She's secretly a gamer. She's very shy and introverted. And uh, she plays this online game as as a, a man. She pretends to be uh, a grizzled veteran and she's one of the best players in the world. The company that makes the game reaches out to her, wants her to beta test a, a new augmented reality game. It's not one that you can just play in your house. You've got to go outside and you wear special goggles and they give you special tools and stuff. And uh, plot twist, the monsters that she's fighting with these tools are actually real and they present an existential threat to Earth, but the gamers or the, the game engineers don't tell people that uh, because they don't want there to be mass panic. And they know that people are like mass addicted to video games. So they're like, well, why don't we just disguise it as a video game? And that's how we'll turn the tide against these things, whatever they are. And uh, at the end of the book, Lynn and her team, because it's a team game, <coughs> excuse me, they, d they still don't know what's really going on. But they've leveled up and they're entered in a competition and there's this huge prize pot at the end of the rainbow, as it were. You'll get millions of dollars and you'll get a chance to go to the, the game engineering school and you'll design games in your career. Like Basically, you'll be set for life if you win this thing. And so all these teams are getting together to, to, to win it, not knowing what they're actually involved in. And so the second book, it's, it's only two thirds as long as the first. And all of the world building and the characters are established, so it's able to move at a much higher clip. Just to get the quibble out of the way, I will say that this is one of those books, and I, I feel like I've read a lot more books that explain this, or they, they do this uh, over-explaining thing. There's too much dialogue, there's too much explanation, there's too much analyzing and examining a problem from a million different angles. And it feels like, <coughs> excuse me, the pollen count is still nasty today. It feels like writers are doing this kind of as a CYA exercise because with the popularity of channels like, I don't know, like How It Should Have Ended, Pitch Meeting, um, Honest Trailers, these these movie channels on YouTube and stuff that that pick apart movies and find plot holes and stuff, I feel like writers, since they have the space to do this, and they've got a little bit more room on the page and, and whatnot, they are trying to avoid being nitpicked and in order to do that they cover every single permutation of the problem that their characters are in and it just results in characters that don't talk at all the way that real characters do um, I, it's something that i find jarring and as a complaint it is something that happens in this series but it's a testament to the strengths of these books that I still want to come back to them. Like if I'm listening to music or a podcast or something, I with with both of these books, with Into the Real and with Through the Storm, I just thought, man, I really want to finish this one. So I'd, I'd pause whatever else I was doing after I started my day, and I'd fall into a book after I got into a good rhythm at work. So that's a that's a good strength there. Um, I feel like YA has kind of lost its sizzle in the last several years. There aren't very many young adult books that I would want to sit down and read. Maybe it's just me getting older. But in general, um, you know, just based on the sheer volume of books that I read, it's easy for me to muscle my way through a book that I'm not extremely excited about. Uh, a book that's just kind of par for the course or middling for a genre. A book that's fine, but doesn't really knock my socks off or, or uh, surprise me in any way. A lot of times I can sit down and get about a third of the way through the book and I can accurately predict most of what comes next. And this is one of those books that, <coughs> excuse me, if we're looking at the major movements of the story, sure, you can generally predict them because it is about 
plucky heroes rising to the occasion and and solving the problem set before them. But there there are certain arcs and movements to the way that the story plays out that elevate this book from its peers. I wanted to highlight three things in particular. Uh, for one, if, so <laughs> popular complaint about cinema and stories in general, all of the big popular IPs that have been bought up by corporations and then crashed into the ground is that a lot of them are trying to focus on telling girl boss stories where the main character is a female protagonist who is just awesome and has always been awesome and never really had to struggle or overcome anything to become awesome. She just needed all the uh, evil patriarchal men or doubters or haters or whatever to get out of her way and uh, stop interfering with her awesomeness. And it makes for just flat out bad stories, bad characters, unrelatable characters and characters that aren't uh, admirable or aspirational by any stretch. Lynn Raven is not such a character. She is a female protagonist and she is, she's not necessarily forced into the role of leadership, but she is qualified to do the job. She's just extremely reluctant to do so largely because she has a lot of, of self doubt and that there are, there are others that are willing to step into the role and she does the thing that's easiest to go along and get along. The arc is not just about Lynn. It's about Lynn and her team learning to work as a group and to work together and to figure out whose ego do we need to set aside and uh, who needs to set aside their own timidity to do what is best for the team. And because Lynn has the most experience in the game and she's secretly one of the best gamers due to you know, her just grinding hard and working hard at it, the, the, the guy who's the leader of the team has to step down and there's a, there's a powerful development in the story that gets, her there, gets him there. And, uh, you know, Lynn has to, you know, realize like, you know, even though I don't want to do this, I am the best one suited to do it. So I've got to set aside my own discomfort and, and do this particular job. And, uh, I thought that was good. You know, it was, it was a way to get to that. If, you know, if the goal is girl boss storytelling, okay, fine. But you still got to give us good storytelling and the character has to earn it to get there. And I feel like she did. That was great. <coughs> Uh, that's one of three. The, the second of three is Sherer and Ringo did a great job of looking down the road at what laws and culture might look like in 20 years with regard to social media. There's a scene where Lynn's got a higher, basically like a social media digital imaging brand management group. And they actually sit down and go through the laws, the free speech laws and how it all relates to your social media presence online. If you, if you hire a group to manage your image, what's that going to look like? What can they protect you from? There are paparazzi drones in the future. It's even more annoying than the regular paparazzi today. And she's got tons of drones following her now that she's famous from winning the competition in the last book, but she wants the drones to go away. They're getting really, really bad. And uh, the, the guy at this group explains the, the risks, the benefits, and, and all that stuff. It's it's almost one of those scenes where like two characters sit down to explain something to each other, but they're really explaining it to the reader. But it was so fascinating. I've become a major consumer of legal entertainment, and I'm not talking like the law and order bullcrap. I mean, actual lawyers on YouTube watching cases play out or offering explanations of the law and special cases and stuff. And uh, this was a, a great integration of that concept into the story that enriched the world building and showed the character overcoming another challenge. I thought that was really cool. In the third and probably the most important aspect, I think even more than the team figuring out how to properly delegate the role of leadership was uh, the whole romantic angle of it all. Um, there's a new character who comes onto Lynn's team and He's competent, but he's also a little bit domineering, which she's fine with because he assumes the leadership role and she doesn't want it. But he's also showing romantic interest in her. And uh, it, it seems kind of fine. It seems kind of innocuous. But 
if you've got any experience with bad relationships, you kind of start to see things that can signal trouble later on, just the way that he's kind of possessive of her, the way that he's always just putting a hand on her and she doesn't really know how to say no. She's never been in this situation before. She doesn't even know how to respond to it. And she is attracted to him, but she just doesn't know what else to do. And then he starts taking her out on dates and stuff. And then finally one thing leads to another and he pretty much expects her to, uh, to sleep with him. And it all just kind of blows up the way that subplot was handled. I thought, you know, when my kids get old enough to date, this is the kind of book that I would want them to read both my sons and my daughter. And I would want to sit them down and say, okay, you see what he's doing. You see what she's doing. You see what it looks like, but do you see what it really is? Do you see what the problem is? Here's how you should act. Here's how you shouldn't act. Here's what you should say and not say and do and not do because it was a great demonstration of those hazards in a way that was subtle and at the same time identifiable and uh, it's just one of those elements that puts this story above its peers uh, i just think that that particular element of it was handled very well and you're, you're rooting for lynn when this thing finally comes to a head you can just tell the entire time like she doesn't know how to say no to this guy and on the surface she doesn't really have a reason to but things start getting a little bit more intense and then all of a sudden he's he's saying things that he would probably just say are compliments but they're very forward and not appropriate and he's uh blaming her for looking and acting a certain way <laughs> remember in the last video i said she reminds you with some regularity that she has uh augmented memories uh, in, in a natural sense and they, they get in the way and uh, with teenage boys around that's going to cause some eyes to fall on you whether you want it to or not and she's just got to learn to navigate the whole dating and romance world of it all. Uh, I'll probably say for the fifth time here that it was, it was definitely handled, it was done very well and uh, all of that stuff enriched the overall plot which uh, again seemed somewhat predictable but at the same time satisfying and uh, it was nice to see her really grow into and embrace that leadership role uh, in a in a way that felt organic and natural and not forced and not at the expense of other characters who really haven't done anything wrong she's not sitting there like dressing down any of the male characters or emasculating them or whatever it's just this is what the natural setting would look like. And these are how these characters would play off of each other. So uh, a hearty endorsement. Oh, geez, what's one final note? Uh, I guess content warning. Um, they kind of stepped up the language on this one. They just dropped the S word uh, a handful of times, which uh, didn't really strike me as something that they did in the first one. But um, yeah, so great book. Check it out. Until next time, drive safe. See you out there.